Hi, um, over the last few weeks I've um, posted a number of photos that have included my uh, mobile setup in the car and I've had a, a few questions on um, how I've installed my 857. So I'm going to do you a little video just to uh, hopefully answer a few questions. So um, here we've just got a Freelander um, TD4, uh, this is a 2008 model. Um, I've had this for, oh god, I don't know, six, seven years, something like that. And it's still brilliant, <clears throat> absolutely amazing car. So anyway, enough about the car. Here we've got the head unit for the uh, 857D. The bracket that it's on, and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, to be honest. It's kind of a mobile phone bracket, but it's a decent quality one. And then the, the head unit, if I can just take this off, probably without breaking it, there we go. Okay. So I don't know whether you can see this, but um, the, the bracket that the 857 separation kit comes with is literally just a cable tied on there. And then the, the cables, not very neatly in actual fact, they just route down the back of here. So that's the cable for the head unit and also the cable for the speaker. And it goes down, tucks in behind here. As you can see, a bit of it there where it's just fell out. And there's the microphone. And then it goes down here. And then it goes underneath. Oh no, it doesn't, sorry. It comes down the back of this. This just comes off. And there's the cables there. And then they go under the seat. As you can see, I'm not a very good uh, valter. <laughs> um, under the seat to here. Um, and then all of them, again, this all just comes off. All of them go this way. To this point here, this just comes off. And then they go under the seat into the boot. Uh, nothing else to show you there. Let's just go around to the boot. Okay, and then they come under the, uh, they, they come, uh, they, they come underneath here actually, around about, around about here, and then underneath here, and then into this area here, in fact I can probably even pick this up and show you, uh, <clears throat> okay, so they're actually under there, and they come under, around the back of this uh, unit here, and then they pop up just here okay and to here and this is the radio so this is where I keep um, the main unit for the 857 um, the battery feed believe it or not um, just runs off the battery and uh, so the power lead actually runs all the way back through the car and then plugs into the cigarette lighter um, at the back there in terms of the coax, uh, I used to have two mounts on this car, um, one for the 857's uh, VHF aerial and the other one for an ATAS, but I never use HF when I'm mobile, so, um, so I took it off and put it on the other car. The reason why there's cables hanging down is because I had to steal the uh, PL to N type com uh, converter adapter last night when I was contesting, and I just haven't got around to putting it back together yet. But anyway, um, the, uh, the coax cable goes down the back of here, and then it goes up, inside here, inside here, and then it pops out just here. And um, so the, the, the small coax cable is for the antenna, and then the bare braid is for the earth. Not that it's really necessary, but um, if I ever do want to put an ATAS on this mount, then at least the uh, the earth connection's there. And the earth, earth connection, I've uh, just taken across to here. I, uh, I, I used a multimeter to make sure that there was continu continuity from between here and here, and then continuity between here and um, the negative of the, uh, of the radio. So I know that it is perfectly earthed. So, uh, and then last but not least, the mount, this is the mount. Um, I've got a feeling it's a diamond, but I might be wrong about that. 
I know the mount on its own was quite expensive. I've had cheaper mounts in the past, but um, they wear and then the aerial starts flopping around. Uh, I use one of two different aerials on this car. Uh, depending if I'm using it for work, business, I will use this small aerial, uh, which it, it does the job, as you can see, it's a bit bent. It doesn't really matter, you know, it was only a cheap five pound thing from eBay. And it does a relatively good job, to be honest. Um, alternatively, I will use, I've got a, a really nice uh, Diamond SG7900, um, which does a really great job, uh, but it's quite big. So uh, I don't use it all the time. So there you go. Um, there you go. I knocked it forwards the other day going through a barrier. There you go. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, it's seven free from me. Barrier.